Hi, it's Mr. T here. In this series of videos, I'm gonna go through how to answer exam questions uh, so that you get the best out of your writing when you're uh, sitting exams. If you find this video useful, don't forget to click a thumbs up, subscribe, and then click that bell for notification if you wanna see the next video. Right, in this video we'll be looking at constitutional or structural isomers. Um, in particular, we're looking at a level two NCEA organic chemistry paper. I'm gonna go through the last three exam questions uh, on these questions and make sure that you have a thorough and robust understanding so you can answer the questions to uh, the best of your ability. Right, um, let's look at constitutional isomers or structural isomers and how to answer exam questions on them. In particular, I'm gonna look at 2021, 2022, and 2023 NZQA exams. Um, we're looking at the organic chemistry exam. If you wanna look at the specific exams and the questions, so you can follow through with me, just uh, look at the reference at the right there, just put that into your Google search engine and you should be able to find the papers and then have a go at these yourself. Okay, structural isomers, or sometimes called constitutional isomers. What are they? These are when we have the same number and type of atoms, but bonded in a different structural way. So this first question asks us to, um, to unpack this. And the very first thing they say is that there is a, uh, four compounds, a variety of alkanes and alkenes. Remember, alkanes contain just carbons and hydrogens with single bonds and alkenes contain carbons, hydrogens, and a double bond. Um, so we've got four compounds here. Part A, they want, they say two compounds are constitutional or structural isomers of one another. That means that they are, they must meet the requirements of being structural isomers. That is, they must have the same atoms and same type and number of atoms, but arranged in a different way. So the very simple thing to do here is to count up the number of atoms in each one. So if I went to compound one, I would see there are four carbons, whereas in compound two, three, and four, there are six. So compound one is definitely out of there, right? So that's a no-go. Um, when I go look at compound two, it looks kind of different to compound three and four. So let's th look at three and four. Well, compound three has a double bond, so it's got six carbons and 12 hydrogens, where compound four has six carbons and 14 hydrogens. So they do not have the same number and type of atoms, so they are not constitutional isomers. Well, let's have a look at compound two then. Does it have anything similar with four and three? It's in a circle, we call this a cyclic compound. It has six carbons and 12 hydrogens. So it's actually the same number of carbons and hydrogens as compound three. So compound two and compound three have the same number and type of atoms. Now I've got to justify why I chose these two. Well, that, I'll just go over what I just said. Both compound two and three have the same molecular formula. And we can unpack this further. We could, we could say they both have six carbons and 12 hydrogens or the same number and type of atoms. The second thing that they have that makes them constitutional isomers because they have to have something that's the same the number of atoms and type of atoms and something that is different. We can tell them apart. What they have that is different is that the atoms are bonded in different arrangements. So I want to tell them what the different thing is, bonded in different arrangements, but I actually want to give some specific detail here. So what I, I'll, I'll give a detail about compound three. I'll say in compound three, the six carbons are arranged in a circular or a cyclic um, fashion. So they're arranged in a circle. When three, they're arranged in a line and in fact, there's a double bond between the third and the fourth carbon here. So I've given some more detail here just to unpack the answer a bit more and make sure that it's a robust answer to this question. Now, when I look at the marking schedule for this achievement standard 91165 for 2021, I get an achieved point here for identifying the two that are structural or constitutional isomers of each other. I get another for explaining why. So if I said, hey, they've got the same molecular formula, but they're arranged in, or the bonds, they're joined in different ways, I get another A. But if I can actually link, and link here means me giving specific detail about each compound, that is the first 
uh, the compound two, the carbons are linked in a circle. Compound three, they're all in a line. That detail takes it to a merit point. And, and that makes this uh, a, a lot more marks that we've collected for this question if we can give just a wee bit more detail. Let's have a look at the next question, 2000. Okay, so um, let's look at 2022 then. Notice that they've given us five different compounds, A, B, C, and D. Um, and if we go down to the question, question one, uh, Roman numerals three, they want to circle the form of isomerism or the type of isomers that exist between B and C. And we've got two uh, bolded answers here that are either constitutional isomers, structural isomers, or geometric isomers. So let's just circle B and C at the top here. Um, let's just put notation on B to show where the double bond is. Um, and what one do we think it is? Well, if they were geometric isomers, let's go there, they would have cis and trans. But to be able to have cis and trans versions for geometric isomers, they must have a double bond to stop rotation. So compound B has a double bond, but compound C doesn't. So they can't be cis and trans isomers because one doesn't have a double bond. If, it, if they're not geometric isomers, they're obviously going to be constitutional isomers. Let's just check. To be constitutional isomers, you need to have two things, right? And we're going to write down the two things that they do have in the answer here. The first thing that they do have that is the same, they have the same number and type of atoms. There are five carbons, ten hydrogens, and one oxygen in compound B. There are five carbons, 10 hydrogens, and one oxygen in compound C. So both compound B and C have the same molecular formula, C5H10O. The next thing that they have, the thing that is different that you need to have for constitutional isomers, the atoms are bonded in a different arrangement. That is, let's give detail to this, in compound B, they are bonded five in a line. The parent chain has five in it, but there is a double bond coming off between one and two. But compound C is completely different because it has five carbons in a circle bonded in a cyclic structure. So this is, we've talked about at the bottom here, one thing that is the same and one thing that is different that makes them constitutional isomers. Now, if I was to go to the answers for this exam, I get one point for identifying that they're constitutional isomers. And then I get the next level of point at a merit for explaining why here. And explaining why is to do with they have the same molecular formula. They just bound, uh, um, bonded in a different way. This question here is not as complex as the 2021 one. Uh, they don't expect you to give the exact detail. But I will always put it there because you never know whether they're going to mark it with two A's and an M or just one A and an M. Let's have a look at 2023. Okay, 2023, a wee bit harder here because we actually have to draw the constitutional isomers. Now, when I draw constitutional isomers, I always like to start, I draw them out fully expanded like they are here. And I look at it, and this is the first one they've drawn it for us. It says draw and name the four, but actually they've done the first one. Oh, they've said that here. Wow. My bad. Okay, so these four carbons in a row, there's an OH coming off the first one. Well, if I want it arranged in a different way, but exactly the same atoms, of course, I could put the OH here off the second one. And there we go. So this is, um, what's its name? Well, this is called butan-1-ol because it is an alcohol that has the OH coming off the first carbon. This one here is obviously the OH coming off the second carbon. So it's butan-2-ol. Because they have two different names, it gives me verification that they are actually different isomers of each other. Okay, so I could put an OH off the next carbon along, but remember how we name things. We always name from the side that gives the functional group its lowest number. So if I put it coming off this carbon here, it would still be butane 2 also. That's not a different version. If they put the OH off the carbon extreme on the left, it would also be butane 1-O again. So it's just the first one uh, reflected or flipped. So uh, we have to think a bit different here. I know what we can do. Let's start by doing three in a row and put one carbon off the middle. Now we can put the OH off the first carbon or off a carbon. We can make it a primary alcohol. We can put it off the carbon that's only joined to one other carbon. 
In this case, this is propane 1-ol, but there's a methyl group coming off the second carbon, so it's 2-methyl propane 1-ol. You can get away here by just calling this methyl propane 1-ol because there is no other way that you could make a methyl propane 1-ol without putting it on the second carbon. Okay, what is the fourth possible one? Well, I can't change the backbone structure anymore. I can't arrange these carbons in a different way. But what I can do is move this OH so it comes off the middle carbon. Now, because it's attached to the middle carbon, this is actually a tertiary alcohol, but this is different to the one on the left. And this is 2-methylpropan-2-ol. Okay, so these are the four different structures. This is actually quite... The, for me, in structural isomerism questions, this is one of the most challenging parts I see with students. And look, you really have to practice uh, finding different examples and drawing all the possibilities and making sure that you eliminate any doubles or ups and only get the ones that are the structural isomers of each other. Okay, real easy now, we can do the last bit. Can we justify why they're structural isomers? Why they are is because they have the same molecular formula, okay? They have three carbons. They have one, two, three, four, ten hydrogens and one oxygen. But why, what is different that makes them be structural isomers? Well, they have atoms bonded in different arrangements. See, two of these have four carbons in the longest chain, in the parent chain. The other two have three. See, arranged differently. Also, in the first two, the OH, in one of them it comes off carbon one, in the other it comes off carbon two. Notice in the last two sentences, or, or the second part of the complex sentence of the second sentence, and the last sentence, I have placed in detail here so I can get the best possible mark. So, answers. Did I put all the correct compounds? Yes, of course I did. Correct explanation? Yep. Same molecular formula, but different uh, arrangement of atoms. Did I link the features to what I'm talking about? But I give some specific detail. Yes, I did. Awesome. I get the merit. Okay, and that is how we answer these questions on structural or constitutional isomers. Okay, if you've got to this part of the video, you've obviously watched uh, all the examples that I had on those three questions. Hopefully this has fortified your understanding of geometric isomers, and you are now well prepared to go and attack that exam. Good luck, and if you found this video useful, don't forget to like it, look subscribe, and look out for new videos that I might put up by clicking that bell. See you later.